Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In the last video, we talked about expectation, one of the feature given by the DLT, which is used to cater our data based on some conditions. If you wanted to filter out the data based on some data quality rules, you can go and check that video. In this video, we will talk about CDC, change data capture, okay? So if you remember previously, I mean, before the DLT, right, or, or when we work with the native Spark, right, or uh, in the Databricks notebook without the DLT, I mean to say, previously you used to uh, write the merge into statements to process your CDC, right? Basically the merge statement to process the CDC, correct? And with the help of this, you generally implement SAD1, SAD2 or other slowly changing dimensions, right? But with the delta live table comes into the picture, now you don't have to go ahead and write your complex logic to uh, merge the data between the tables, right? Based on some logics, right? With the DLT, we have a feature, out of the box feature or function you can say, which is known as apply changes, okay? Apply changes API will give you the flexibility to perform CDC and currently it supports only SCD1 and SCD2 operations. Okay. Now, as I said, right, it's an out of the box function or feature you can think, right? It has a specific syntax, right? So if you wanted to use it, right, you need some prerequisites. You have to fulfill some prerequisites. Okay. Or you have some, in, you should have some information. Okay. So the informations are very quite common, right? One is your, one you should use, one you should be having the target table, obviously, right? Then source table, right? Then third, the key, right? On which basis you wanted to perform this CDC, correct? That you need to uh, mention. Fourth one is which type of CDC you want to perform. Is it SCD1 or SCD2? You have to define, my bad. SCD1 or SCD2, you have to uh, pass as a parameter into the function. And then based on these two categories, right, there are two or three more parameters which you need to pass. And one of them is very important, which is known as sequence by, right? So whenever you are using SCD1, you have to pass the sequence by, okay? So what sequence by, I mean, these are quite common, right? They are self-explanatory. But what sequence by does is, it helps us if same key with the same time appear in, then it will treat based on the timestamp, okay? So you'll see the difference, right? When I, I'll start running the code, you will see what difference it brings, okay? So these are the main uh, parameters which you need to pass whenever you are trying to apply the CDC. Okay, so now let me switch over to the Databricks workspace. Okay, I have this notebook ready. Let me just clear it. <clears throat> now, if you see here, the, the first cell, I'm importing the uh, required libraries and then creating the schema and some cloud file options I have defined. And I'm creating a branch table out of it. Okay. And I'm using auto loader to continuously load my data. Okay, that's it. As of now, only these three cells I have written. Now, my next statement will be why it's not cleared. Okay. Hmm. So, my next statement will be to create another table, right? The target table in which I wanted to push the data. But before proceeding to the target table, what I'll do, I'll showcase you the data which I have prepared. So if you see, I have four columns in my table, in my files, okay? One is the key column, which I mentioned, which starts from zero to eight in one of the file, day one, okay? And then I have another file, day two. And if you see, I mentioned few of the keys duplicate, like zero, seven, and eight. So these three keys are duplicate, okay? Zero, seven, and eight, okay? Now, what I will do, I'll first perform SCD1, 
and we'll see the difference into the target table. Then we'll do SCD2 and then we will see the difference in the table. Okay, that is our task. Now, this is my source. What I'll do, I'll create a target table. Now, I don't want to load anything target in the target table. I just wanted to create the target table. So to create the target table, DLT has given one of the function create streaming table. You can use this table and you can give the name. Let's say silver table. Okay, silver load. I can say. Now my table is ready. Okay, so I have created the table. Now I will go ahead and I will create the SCD. I will start with the apply changes. Okay, so DLT dot it will give you that oh my bad apply changes if you can see okay in apply changes function as i said we have multiple parameters if i hover it you can see these parameters like target source keys sequence where and all there are so many right but let's go ahead with the major ones which we generally use okay so let's first specify the target in the target i will say this is the table where i wanted to load the data okay then i have to pass the source where the data is coming from right which is bronze load <coughs> this is the one bronze load Then we have to specify the keys on which key on the basis of which key I wanted to perform this apply change operation, right? So I have this key P key. I have given the name. Let's say and after this, as I said, we need to mention what kind of SCD you wanted to perform. So let's say I am performing SCD one first. Okay, and then I have to give sequence by on what sequence or in which sequence I wanted to store it. Okay, so we'll talk about this one. Okay, now if you see when I'm loading the data, I'm not doing anything, but just for the clarity purpose, right? What I will do, I will add one column here. Okay, I will add one column to store the current timestamp, the time when we are loading this file. Okay. So that it will be it will give us the clarity okay df dot with column and column name could be like uh, file process date something like that and i'll use one function let's say date format and i will format the current timestamp in that current timestamp okay and then uh, I will give the format what kind of format I am looking by 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 mm dt and then hh mm ss so this is my format right in which I wanted to store my data now Let's close this. Okay. So now this is done. Okay. So I will receive a DF with five columns instead of four. The fifth column will be my file process date. Okay. And just to see the sequence, right, in which order it is inserting the data, I'll do this column. Okay. So this apply change will handle the merge part here okay now that's it let's run this code and see what is the output we are getting and before that i will check the catalog i have only one file now okay so first we will load one file then we'll load the another file let's run it it will take a minute or so so i'll pause the video once the initialization will start so it started the uh, graph rendering 
and let's see how much data we'll be able to insert. So since we have only one file as of now, the day one file, so we will be expecting nine records in bronze as well as in silver. So bronze is completed. Now let's see the silver records. <clears throat> it's taking a big time, but let's see. Yeah. And done. So I can see nine records are here written. And if you see here, it is saying upside it, right? Let me do one thing. Now I will upload one more file in the volume. Day two. Upload. Now we'll run the same pipeline again. And what I'm expecting is it will read only the second file since we are using the auto loader. And there are three records which are already there, right? So it should upset those records basically, right? I mean, instead of the previous one, it should overwrite based on the new records. Let's see that. Okay, so graph started rendering. It will read the nine records again because in second file also we have nine records. But out of these nine records, three were like you can say it's a duplicate, right, or something. So since the data is already there, let's see what it will do with the SCD one. Okay. So all the nine records are upsetted, right? Earlier also nine records were there. So it will update those three records, right? So in total, we should be getting nine plus six, something like that, right? 15 records. Let's query the table and see the output now. So to query the table, you can simply use spark.read.table and catalog name, schema name, and the table name, right? Silver load. And let's hit display. Let's see the output. And we'll see the output for bronze as well. I'm using a very small cluster. That's the reason everything is taking a little bit time. You can fast forward if you want. So if you see, we have only 15 records. Okay. And the one which are kind of, uh, what to say, which are kind of already written, it simply ignore those records, right? So see, these are the ones which are written now. I mean, ignore means, sorry, updated one, right? So the ones which are already loaded first time from the file A, it is there, 12, 3, 10. And the one which is inserted latest with the latest file, you see here. So it's simply overwritten those three records as well, right? And in the branch, if you see, you will see all the 18 records, right? Let's see. See, all 18s are there. This is the one. And then these are the ones. So we have all the records available here. So this is how you can implement SED1. In a similar way, what I will do, I will do SED2 as well. Okay, I will say I wanted to use SED2. But with SED2, if I try to run it now, right, it will ask us to more, uh, basically two more parameters. One is the track history, right? How you will identify that your I mean, based on your history records or based on which column, basically, right? Which column, I mean, the values are updated. That's what my, I mean to say, right? So when you use this track history column list, it will help you to maintain any historical change in the row, right? So, so let me write it first. Let's say track history column list. And I will mention my column. Let's say file process date only. Since these three records will process with the next date, right? Next process date. You will see there is a start date and the end date for those three records. Okay. You will see the difference now when I run it. Okay. So let, let's let's run it and see the difference. That, that is the only way. So what I will do before running, I will remove this tape. Or 
yeah remove this file let's just keep the day one i will start a full refresh let's run it so first run it will load the nine records and in the second run again we will see what changes it made in the table okay so as of now you see we have only five these uh, columns right but with scd2 you will see two more columns into this table which will have start date as well as end date right something called like that so let, let's see how it actually uh, will be visible right So it's setting up the table already. So in meanwhile, I'll just explain you one more time. So what this track history column list does is basically whenever, I mean, you mention a column name, right? See, all the nine records are updated. Okay. So what I'll do, I'll quickly, first of all, update, updo, update, sorry, I'll quickly upload the second file and then I'll simply start the, query, the uh, pipeline. Okay. So if you, <coughs> if you, talk about this particular parameter right track history column list what it does is so let's say i have added file process date right so whatever field we will mention here right if there is any change in the value of this column right it will be tracked as a sad2 right so when the first file process the timestamp will be different for these three records right these three records right 0 1 0 7 8 right and the second time when I'll process it, obviously the file process date will change, right? Based on the timestamp. So you will see the difference will be maintained in SCD2. That's what this column does, right? It, it tracks that history. So let's see. Initialization already started and loading is also started. It is upserting the records, right? It's not just writing the records. That's the difference you will see when you are running the up and all. Oh, sorry, apply changes function. It's done. And you see, 12 records are updated, right? Upserted basically. So nine records, the new one, and three, the previous one, right? Because it needs to update those as well to maintain the history. So let's run the code and see the difference. So what I'll do, I'll, I'll not change this because this, is, this one is for SCD1. I just wanted to show you the difference also after running SCD2, what happened in the table, okay? So you see, now we have two columns added start at and a at right and it, it is automatically i didn't did anything right so and you see there is a end at right on what basis this end at came because of this column right i i told i i actually instructed apply changes saying that if there is any change in this column right based on this change or this change you have to mention or you have to track it right so that's what it's tracking it's tracking the changes here so if you see the first time when it processed it processed around 12 9 right and the second time it processed at 12 10 so 10 is the latest one and for the 9 it's it's written that the, it is ended at this particular time frame right it is updated that's what we do in SED 2 right to maintain the history so that's how this append apply changes actually help in the DLT to perform merge operations. And I, I really like this feature, right? It's really simple. You don't have to worry about sequence. You don't have to worry about tracking the changes and everything. You don't have to write that bulky code, right? So it's a great feature, I think, uh, which is provided by the DLT. As of now, it's only support SCD1 and SCD2. But let's see in the subsequent uh, the, the updates maybe we will see new updates from the database team so thanks thanks for watching this video i hope this video will be helpful for you guys thanks a lot